Hello and welcome back to another dose of Dr. Owen's Muscle Medicine. This video addresses the surprisingly prevalent fitness myth that creatine is an anabolic steroid by explaining the key differences in function, legality and risks and side effects. Now, anybody that's spent a decent amount of time in a gym or been to a supplement store will know that creatine and anabolic steroids don't really belong in the same sentence. Alas, it is impossible to make the point of this video without putting them together in the same sentence. And we were all beginners once, and all of us had to learn the difference at some point on our own fitness education journey. Now, let's begin. Creatine is to anabolic steroids what a bicycle is to a jumbo jet. Sure, they'll both get you where you're going faster than walking. In this case, they'll both help you towards a stronger, more muscular body and that is where the similarities end. Both substances enhance human sporting performance, but one is a natural component of our diets and amplifies our pre-existing capacity a moderate amount by improving energy stores in skeletal muscles, whilst the other is an illegal substance banned in most countries and major sports that completely changes the game by reshaping our entire body's hormone balance. Now, bicycles are generally safe to use and the skill set required to ride them safely is quite low. The same is true of creatine, so long as we read the packet, follow the instructions and stay hydrated. Jumbo jets, on the other hand, are powerful and complicated machines. They can be dangerous when misused, and therefore they should only be used by specialists that are aware of all the risks and side effects. Anabolic steroids are extremely powerful and complicated things, and should be left to the use of specialists trained in treating identified testosterone deficiencies because they can cause all sorts of negative health effects when misused. This may have stretched the analogy a little far. Still, the safety of each product is reflected in its legality. Creatine has been sold over the counter in health shops and chemists since the 1990s, and literally anyone can go and buy it. Anabolic steroids, by contrast, are a Class C controlled substance in the USA and are just as illegal in the UK. Moreover, just as you wouldn't buy a 747 jumbo jet from a shady corner of the internet and expect it to work properly, you absolutely shouldn't buy anabolic steroids from that same shady corner of the internet because the manufacturing process is neither monitored nor controlled. What may look like a jumbo jet might actually just be a Honda Civic dressed up as one. Read, far less active component than advertised. Or, it could be a fighter jet. Read, extremely dangerous substances most of us would never knowingly ingest or inject. Right, let's get out of the saddle and hang out the analogy. Back to creatine versus anabolic steroids. Creatine is a protein found in skeletal muscle that helps us to keep energy stores replenished through something called the phosphocreatine system, allowing us to perform an extra rep or two of high intensity muscle work. The cumulative effect of squeaking out a few extra reps then compounds over time to significant but not enormous muscle strength and growth gains. Our muscles are already stocked with some creatine, which our liver and kidneys produce, and that we get through eating meat. Supplementation aims to slightly enhance these muscle stores, and with adequate supplementation at recommended doses, we quickly reach a point of saturation where our muscles cannot store any more creatine, so continued low-dose daily supplementation aims only to keep muscle creatine levels at the top end of the natural range that they can hold, so that it's there ready and waiting to help us eke out those last couple of reps. Anabolic steroids mostly come in the form of synthetic versions of testosterone, an androgenic hormone that our bodies also naturally produce. Whereas our muscles simply stop taking up creatine once we've reached that saturation point, it is possible to keep flooding our bloodstream and bodies with more and more testosterone, way beyond what we could ever naturally produce. Like most hormones, testosterone's effect, and by extension those of anabolic steroids, are not limited to one target tissue or organ, with the intended effect being the promotion of muscle protein synthesis in skeletal muscles. Instead, it has profound effects on numerous other organs and tissues throughout the body, including cardiac muscle, increasing the risk of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a heart condition in which heart function decreases because it's too big and bulky to pump properly and efficiently, which anabolic steroids promote the buildup of plaques, increasing our risk of heart attack. And the following is a non-exhaustive list of other bad things anabolic steroids can do to our bodies. Insomnia, high blood pressure, liver damage. Some more specific risks for females include deepening of the voice, loss of menstrual periods, and the unwanted development of facial hair. As for males, some more specific risks include shrinking of the testes, gynecomastia, 
which is the development of female breast tissue, and infertility. As for the side effects of creatine, you probably need to drink another half litre of water per day to avoid constipation and dehydration and keep your bowels regular. But it is otherwise safe for everyday use in healthy adults with some small but nonetheless significant benefits, kind of like a bicycle. Whereas the anabolic steroids are dangerous every time they're used by someone not suitably trained and should therefore only be used to treat conditions of low testosterone to bring them back into normal physiological ranges which I guess is nothing like a jumbo jet. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you know of anyone who would benefit from watching this video, please share it with them. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next one.